What's up guys? Thanks for stopping back by the channel. So I got another cool one for you guys. We're gonna get back into the tools in action, but this ain't gonna just be a tools in use. It's gonna be tools in use, review, and comparison on an endoscope. Check it out. Shut up and sit down. All right, guys, so I've reviewed endoscopes before. I use endoscopes, you know, day in, day out. Obviously, snap-on camera, boroscopes, however. Um, but this one's actually pretty nice. I, I dig this one as opposed to, you know, like a Wi-Fi one that you would link to your phone. You know, sometimes your hands are dirty, you don't want your phone out. But those wireless endoscopes, you know, that link to your phone, you don't want to always break your phone out. You know, you got your hands are oily, whatever, you know, wrist dropping your phone and coolant and all that stuff. This one actually comes with a 4.3 screen. Um, it is LCD. Got a nice power button on the side. You got the uh, light control. This uh, real slim, I think, 5.5 millimeter camera has six LEDs in it. It's, uh, you know, definitely slim enough to fit you know, inside engine or tight areas and all that. Got a super long, you know, bendable cable on here. It's real malleable. You can kind of bend it wherever you want. This thing boots up super quick. Um, I believe it's the same app too, a uh, Wi-Fi app that would use it. And then you guys got the camera here. You can see pretty good quality too. It's got uh, decent menus. It's not a touch screen or anything like that, but it's got a decent menu down in here in the settings. You can change the resolution, the LED mode, USB mode. This thing does come with an 8 gig SD storage because it does record, does take pictures, all that good stuff. Um, you know, I'm sure you could save it to the computer, you know, email it to your file or send it to a customer if you want to. But it's pretty, uh, pretty nice. A lot of good features on it. You know, definitely the camera alone, the you know, picture quality on this isn't bad at all. Um, you know, for being, you know, an entry level boroscope or you know, endoscope camera. But we're gonna get this thing out. I got a Nissan here at the shop, get this thing uh, in use, show you guys what we're using it for today, and uh, you know, maybe compare it to the snap-on camera or something like that. So if you guys are in the market looking for uh, you know, a nice endoscope, this one's definitely uh, one to look at. Uh, the name there, your uh, guess is as good as mine. I, I call it uh, IOWAC. I don't know. I don't know if that's an O or just two I's, but it does come with the Accessories, you got your mirror, you got your hook, you got your 45 degree angle, nice little tube for it, keep them in, um, you know, keep them clean, keep them all together so you don't lose them. And then the case is real nice in it too. It's got a little pouch on the side and then how you load this thing in there is obviously put the monitor down on one end and then the camera would go on the other end and it closes up real nice, zips up, it's got a little handle on it. But let's get this thing in use real quick. So, got the endoscope. Definitely been playing around with this thing. You guys know I always check them out before we, you know, we start rolling on a video or go live with these things. But we got an 07 Spec V Nissan. Steve's been playing around with. Obviously, we're kind of, we're probably knee deep in it. You know, maybe ankle deep in it right now. Guy came in, low on coolant, overheating issue. So obviously, we go do our preliminaries, pressure test it, look for leaks. It definitely was low. Um, but as it sat, you know, we start getting into it and. You know, after you start it up, you can smell cool and all that stuff. So kind of just trying to decide, you know, how I want to diagnose this thing. Do I want to, you know, check the exhaust? Do I want to pull, rip this thing apart? Is it intake? Is it head gasket? And, you know, we pretty much know what it is, but I'll show you how this tool shines and compare it to the Snap-on BK8500 um, on what we are. So where we're at here, we got, we got pressure in the coolant system. We got all the spark plugs out. We're gonna drop this bad boy down into the cylinders and show you guys what we saw. All right, so Steve's gonna get ready to drop it down into cylinder number two there. You can see all the spark plugs are out. We even got the comparison snap-on scanner. Obviously, one of the main differences between these two are gonna be the price point and some video quality, but you know, for a job, for something like this, you know, it's not like you're trying to get too detailed. Most of the shots that I've seen on the, you know, this uh, endoscope, it's been pretty good close-up shots. I don't know if the, my camera's picking that up, but dropping this thing down into cylinder number two, you guys could see, you could already see it shining there. And this camera, you know, showed us that, okay, we, we definitely got an issue there. Go down a little more, Steve. You can see some carbon build up, but you can definitely see dirty coolant down in the cylinder. You can't even see the top of the piston. Steve's spinning it there a little bit. Definitely good quality. There's some oil off on the side there. 
you know, definitely worn down. This thing's definitely worn down. Definitely getting cooling in there somehow. That thing, that looks really full. Here, do uh, do number three. Number three was pretty much the same, not that bad. Not as bad, but this thing has been sitting for about five minutes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's totally full. Yeah, this, this thing might even hydro lock. Um, so there we are there with pressure in the system. This thing's pretty full. The camera is waterproof, so he ain't got to worry about it getting into the coolant or anything like that. But you can, can't even see it. Now compare me to uh, one that we can't actually see. Number four didn't have coolant in there. So we're definitely getting to coolant inside there. Oh, man. Well, we got coolant in Coolant in all of them, huh? Go to one. Yeah, one didn't. One was dry? Yeah, one at first. Let's see, after sitting for a little bit. No, we're one still dry. dry. So there's what it should look like in these cylinders, guys. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to, if this guy doesn't want to fix this, we're gonna have to take that cone out for him. So yeah. this thing will actually run again. Yeah, so it doesn't hide. But, well, so you can obviously see there's cone in there. This camera is obviously able to tell us that. You can see where it shines. We got all the settings. I could take pictures for the customer here in the menu. You know, I bring the customer out here if he was here to show him what's going on here. You obviously, you got cone where you're not supposed to. This does have a bad head gasket, but we'll tell you exactly why. Okay, it's not as full as I thought because I could see the side of the piston there. Right. But we're going to go ahead and compare the quality of this screen to the snap-on screen. Let's get set up. So what we're going to do here, guys, is uh, I wanted to try it. want to get this in there real quick before we throw the snap-on one on there. We put the little mirror setting on there. And uh, just show you guys kind of the quality on the screen here. You know, I'm already picking up dust and all that stuff. But we're going to see if we can see what's going on inside the cylinder here. The snap-on one obviously has two cameras on it. It'll give you the 45, you know, the angle view. Let's get Steve to see the screen too so he can see what he's doing. Yeah, that's pretty rough, man. I mean, it cuts off, you know, pretty much 25% of the picture you're seeing. Go ahead, give it a spin. It's hard to make out. I mean, I guess for the most part, you could definitely see the head in the side of the cylinder, but let's see if we could show you guys what's going on with it. Keep spinning. Oh. Getting close, getting close. There it is. Go down. Yeah, you can barely make that out. But it gets it. It's got the accessories in here. You know, it gets the job done for what for what it is. You know, what it costs. This thing's not badly priced. Obviously, I'll have links down in the description off Amazon where you can find this thing on Amazon. But all right, guys. So getting all prepped up. We got the snap-on boroscope out, and Steve's gonna do the same thing. But what's cool, obviously, you know, some of the extra features this one's going to have is that extra camera on there. You guys have seen this in a, you know, I, I featured this tool before. I, I use this thing all the time. Um, so we're down in cylinder number two. You can see there, turn the light up a little bit. And then, you know, the feature here for the side camera, you'll be able to, we'll be able to tell exactly what's going on here. So there's the threads. You can see, you know, the top of the piston, the screen's upside down here, but you can see the, you know, the bottom portion would be the head. You can see the side of the block there. Steve's spinning it around. You can see it starts to get a little wet there. Keep going around and around, and boom. You can see exactly where the gasket has failed and just leaking right down into the cylinder there. So this would be a great picture to show the customer, you know, easy way to diagnose a head gasket. Obviously, you know, with it, even with a, you know, an entry-level boroscope, you know, you don't necessarily need anything too fancy, but you can see all the coolant and oil, the dirt just leaking right off the head gasket, right into the cylinder, filling these cylinders, cylinder wall, you know, filling the cylinder up with coolant. That's no good. So easy peasy, you can see the top of the valve there, but, you know, definitely bad. I would say that gasket doesn't look healthy all around the cylinder. Oh, that's a nice shot there too. See any carbon on top of the valve there? But just a quick one there for you guys. This one's obviously gonna get priced up to the customer. He mentioned something about an extended warranty, so we'll see if we'll sell the job, but easy tools in use. Real quick uh, tools in use. This thing's definitely uh, probably one of the coolest, you know, endoscopes I've seen. And I mean, for 79 bucks, you know, you can't beat it. Like I said, I'll have links down in the description, but you know, a great alternative to you know, buying at least the snap-on camera that I got, the BK8500, yes, it has a lot more features like the UV, um, you know, higher resolution, all that stuff, it is wireless, but, you know, to get the job done, stuffing it down in a quick diag on a Nissan, you know, I mean, it's, uh, it's a great tool, D definitely something to look at, so, but, uh, like I said, links will be down in the description. I'm going to be putting this thing through the ringer a little bit more, see how it holds up and all that stuff, but I figure I'd get at you with one of them. As always, guys, like, comment, subscribe.
Catch you in the next one. Signing out.